Good morning, everyone. My name is Deanne Green, and um, this morning I'm going to talk to you about getting started with your lit review. And I am one of the reference librarians at the UTSA Libraries. My two areas that um, I work with are psychology and communication. So I teach um, research instruction to students in those areas, and especially with psychology students and communication students, I teach classes on writing um, or gathering resources rather for a lit review. So that's what we're going to talk about this morning. I'll go ahead and, and move on to my next slide here. So our objectives for this workshop, I want to first uh, talk a little bit about a, what, what a literature review is. Uh, we won't spend as much time on that, but just kind of get to give an overview. You'll be getting that information from your um, professor that you're writing the lit re review for, and you'll get specifics from them on exactly what they would like from you whenever you're, you're conducting your literature review. Talk a little bit about what a lit review is. Um, understand the reasons for writing a literature review. We'll go over that briefly. And then we're going to talk about the steps involved in writing a literature review. So each of the different steps you're going to go through. One of the things I want you to keep in mind is that literature review, the process, it's not something that's set in stone. It is kind of a gray area. So there's not one right or wrong way to write a literature review or go about the process. And then um, primarily what we're going to focus on is looking at the tools available at the UTSA libraries to help you with your research and gathering resources for your lit review. So I know this is kind of tiny, so I'll, I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about what's on that slide. Um, a literature review, basically what I want you to get from this slide, it's not just an annotated bibliography, not just a list of resources, but it's actually you finding those resources and then take, making a critical analysis of, what, of your findings. So basically what the, the lit review does, and it usually looks at the research over a period of time, and your professor will probably give you that information or you can talk with your professor about your time frame um, for your lit review, but it looks at the trends, relationships, and research gaps, and it also details how the selected works, so your resources are going to enhance your understanding of your topic. Keep moving out. So moving on, I think I already mentioned this, there's not one correct way to approach or write a literature review or go about the process. Um, so these are just, what I'm giving you today, just some recommendations. And um, a literature review, one of the things that I'll show you a little bit later on, it can be um, a paper on its own or it can be part of a dissertation. And we'll take a look later on at dissertations and theses full text and I'll kind of show you where you can find lit reviews. That'll be the latter part of this workshop. So actually finding literature reviews in the library. And depending on your discipline, this presentation is kind of more general in the approach. So it will vary from um, discipline to discipline as to what your professor wants from your lit review. Okay, so we're almost through with the slides. Uh, I think I have just two more. So your, your um, approach, choosing a topic, is going to be your first step, and that's going to be something that you're going to do. It's going to be something that's going to change as you're finding your, your information. So um, you may have a general topic in mind, and then as you're looking at the resources, you'll find something that's really interesting to you within that, that broader topic area. And sometimes it is actually good whenever you have a topic to go broad, do your searches in the databases, and then kind of see what's popping up in that area. So what we're going to focus on primarily today is just identifying the literature, finding it at the UTSA libraries. The other steps um, are going to be kind of steps you're going to do on your own or talking with your professor about, about that process analyzing um, that literature once you do find it, and then synthesizing it, and then actually writing your review. Okay, so kind of um, to let you know, this 
workshop is not going to teach you how to write a literature review. Just focusing on finding the resources for, for, that, um, for that lit review. Melissa Thomas in uh, Graduate Student Learning Assistance actually offers a workshop on once you find your resources, then synthesizing it and organizing your information. And I know that it's an excellent workshop. I highly recommend that you sit in on that, especially if you are conducting a lit review um, this semester. Okay, so that's all of my slides. I'm going to go ahead and transition here a little bit. Just pop on over to the UTSA Libraries website. So just a kind of a quick overview. I imagine most of you probably are familiar with the website, but just a little um, overview of the links I'll be touching on. Our Find Databases and Articles link shows you a list of all of our databases alphabetically. And um, if you know the name of a database you want to use, that's the place you can go. Another good place to know about, really important, are research guides. So depending on what area of research you have, uh, you can come here and you can get a little guide to doing research in that area. And these are put together by the subject specialist librarians in um, the library. And you'll see their contact information. So for example, let me pull up. Oh, I'll just take a look at education. When you click on a subject, it's going to give you those guides that are available. The one that I want is just a general guide to um, education research. Charlie Thurston, our education librarian, has put this guide together. And you'll notice that there are tabs. All of these guides look the same. They're laid out pretty much the same way. You're going to see the tabs across the top. So Charlie has compiled this information. Um, Texas State approved instructional materials, where to find that information. Some of these are guides to using um, databases, or they're links to databases that the library subscribes to, which you can log, in, log into from off campus with your last name and banner ID. And some of these may actually be free websites, but these are resources that the librarian has deemed really, really good for your research in the area of education. And you'll also see the contact information for the librarian for that area. You can send them an email. Um, <clears throat> really important to note, um, my areas are psychology and communication. You can feel free to get in touch with me. It's possible that I may refer you to the librarian for your area of research, too. We are available by appointment, so that's also a really good thing to know about. And you can give us a call, set up an appointment, or you can just send us an email if you'd rather contact us that way, whichever way works best for you. The research guides are really important to know about. So if I were going to um, look at, um, I know I'm interested in attribution theory, um, looking at the area of psychology, kind of getting started with the Lit Review, a database that can help you out <coughs> is Gale Virtual Reference Library. And I like this database because it's kind of simple but it gives you a starting point for your research. And um, it'll give you an overview of a theory. It lets you see the big picture. And it does have specialized encyclopedias. And you are going to get the full text. And it's as, as if you're actually looking at the print copy. It looks exactly the same whenever you do your searches in Gale. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. So just going to our alphabetical list, we'll take a look at Gale, Gale Virtual Reference. And like I said, if you are off campus, you'll just put in your last name and banner ID after you click this link. We're on campus right now, so it's just going to take us straight into the database. So I want to find um, books are, that contain entries about attribution theory so I can get a nice overview. Now, one of the things I want to point out, um, it does default on the very first search box to document title. And what that's searching is the entry within that book. You can also do a keyword search, which sometimes if you don't get a lot of hits with the document title search, you can try the keyword and you'll get more because it's going to search more of that, at that entry within the database rather than just the title. But I'm just going to, I'm going to leave it on document theory just to kind of see what I can come up with. 
What I like about this database too is that it does contain resources across different disciplines. A lot of them are subject specific, so you'll see right away. Um, the very first one is looking at, uh, it's actually from the Encyclopedia of Communication Theory. And if we can scroll on down, um, you'll see that there's one from the Encyclopedia of Social Psychology. That's probably the one I want. So I'm just gonna pop into that one. So if attribution theory is something that um, my professor talked about in class, I found it kind of interesting. Maybe we want to come here and get a little bit of a history, a little bit of maybe some keywords. These are also great for getting keywords to search in the databases. Um, if I don't know a lot about it, this is a great starting point, really. And you'll see that my search terms are highlighted throughout that entry here. So it's a good, this is a good starting point kind of give you a, an overview um, of a topic. A lot of times what I found though is these aren't as helpful, um, the, the further readings, because they're older. But actually depending on your discipline, depending on how far back you're going with your research, um, these other sources might be ones you might want to consult. Sometimes they're articles, sometimes they're books. If it's a book, we could look to see if we have it in the library, so it might be something else that you could add to your list of resources. Kind of just a general starting point there. Now if I want to delve a little bit deeper into my research, um, I probably want to take a look at a psychology database. So let's head on back to the library homepage. I didn't show you the research guide for psychology. Um, but you can get to the psychology databases either through the research guides or through the find databases and articles list. I think it's a little easier through research guides because it gives you a shorter list of databases and the ones that are relevant to psychology or whatever area you're researching. So we'll pull up that psychology guide. And now that I have a little bit of a background, maybe I'm ready to take a look at finding articles. So I can just click that tab. And these are the good psychology databases available through the UTSA libraries. Any of these actually would be fine for doing my research. The one that I like to use a lot because it's pretty comprehensive is PsychInfo. And it gives you not just um, journal articles because sometimes when you're writing a literature review, um, you might want to pull in books, other resources. So it's going to give you um, records for books as well, but chapters, those are also going to pop up in your search and not just give you journal articles. So um, it is not a full text database, but um, you're going to see links uh, to the full text of those articles. And a lot of times you're going to be able to get those through our other databases. So we'll just pop into PsychInfo. I'm just using this as my example. Um, just keep in mind, you may have obviously uh, find a better database for your area of research, just depending on what your topic is. So, what we can do is maybe just type in attribution theory. Do a quick search. So we got a lot of hits over a thousand. We could probably narrow this a little bit more. Um, just go ahead and edit my search. I'm looking at attribution theory and I want to make sure it mentions social psychology. It's in that broader area. And you'll notice too, um, all of the databases you can uh, limit by time frame. So if you have, like maybe you're looking at the last 10 years, you only want those to come up in your search. You can um, state that from the onset, from the search screen, or you can modify your search results too, um, as well, for that date frame that you have. So um, just go ahead and do that search. One of the things um, about doing research for a literature review, and really doing any kind of research, is getting the right keywords. So sometimes that can be tricky. And you might be doing searching and not, you're not getting a lot of hits for your, your searches and you're wondering what's going on. There's got to be some research in this area. 
And every now and then it might happen that there's not a lot of research published in that area, but most of the time it is the keywords. So um, what you can do, and we actually got some good, res good search results here, you can take a look at the descriptors that are on the right hand side of the screen there and maybe see if some of those are a little more specific and those are going to help us focus our search. We can take one of these and throw it into our search box, go back and edit our search, or you can click on that broader area. It, I probably wouldn't recommend that because Social psychology, obviously that's going to give us more hits than what we currently already have, and some of those may not be as relevant to what we're researching, but it's a good place to get ideas for keywords. The other thing you can do when you find a good article, um, for example this one, just take a look at the abstract, and the abstract is going to be the summary of the article, and sometimes you may find some keywords in there that are going to help you as well with your area. If you've tried that and you're still not getting many articles that are relevant to that topic that you're in interested in researching, another thing you can do is you can use the thesaurus. And a lot of our databases, a lot of the library's databases have a thesaurus. It is really helpful for the um, jargon of the field, so the more scholarly um, keywords that you're having trouble maybe thinking of other keywords for, other synonyms, broader or narrower terms, it can be really helpful. So in PsycInfo, and I'll show you right after this, where you can find those in the EBSCO database, in, in EBSCO databases too. So if I'm looking for attribution theory, just tap that in. And it didn't find attribution theory, but it found attribution, so I'm just going to follow that. What I really like about the thesaurus, again, it's not so helpful for more common terms, but it is really helpful for more scholarly um, terms associated with your area. It does give you broader terms, so if you're not getting a lot of hits with your search, we're doing a literature review, we want to find more resources, we're not getting a lot of hits, we can use those broader terms that it's recommending. And you can, from this screen, you can actually um, select those and add them to your search, but kind of like the descriptors, and again, this is across databases, across different um, databases that we have. I like to just use this as a place to get ideas for other keywords. And as you're conducting your research for your literature review, it's a really good idea to also keep track of those keywords so that you can draw, draw on them. And also know that if your area of research does um, cross into other areas, like for example mine, attribution theory, maybe I want to look at some so, um, sociology databases, take a look at some of those, see what I can find. So do some um, research across the discipline, across the disciplines as well. So again, it gives us some broader terms, some related terms, um, some of these I might not have thought of, impression formation, a little more specific, uh, might give me some good stuff. Good place to get I other ideas for keywords. The other thing I like about this too is if you are looking at a particular time period, it does give you the um, year that that started being used within the discipline too. So if you are looking at a certain time period, these can sometimes be helpful knowing, looking at the research from that area, okay, what keywords would a scholar have used writing about that during that time frame? So I want to show you in the EBSCO databases, and we'll just pop into um, Academic Search Complete. Just kind of show you where you can find that, that thesaurus. So it's actually under subject terms here, and we can just type in attribution theory. This is a, a more general database, so you're going to be able to find articles on just about any topic in this one. Okay, and then you'll notice that it's giving us attribution social psychology there. Click that, and see it should kind of work. Yeah, here we go. So here are some other um, related terms we might try. 
and then it gives you a little bit of a description of what you're going to find whenever you try those works on judgments about persons and personality based on observed actions. So some broader terms we could try out, and then also some more um, specific terms, some related terms too. Another thing that's also good um, whenever you are conducting a literature review, so I said try a different database. One thing that's nice um, about our, some of the platforms for the databases is you can search uh, multiple databases at once. Now a little bit later on, I'm going to show you a tool that we have called our Quick Search that lets you search across most of the library's content, and that can be really helpful whenever you're conducting a literature review. So if we wanted to take a look at, see if there's another database, kind of falls within the area of my area of research, sociological abstracts, so I can search those both at the same time. And what you'll notice though when I do that is, go ahead and add that, continue my search. And you'll notice that, um, I believe my thesaurus field, is it gone? No, it's still there. Sometimes what will happen whenever you ser are searching a couple of databases at once or three or four is it will um, actually take, take away some of your limits that you have available in the original database because there's just different content um, in each one. I'm going to go back, pull up my, my search results here take sociological abstracts off and just take a look at what I got with PsycInfo. Just run my search again. And I want to click through, um, dig a little bit deeper. One of the things that you'll find whenever you're searching in each of the databases is there's a, a cited by link, and that can be really awesome. Um, it's going to show you some, some other research that you might want to take a look at. Now, what's going to happen, like we're in PsycInfo right now. This is only going to show us articles that are indexed in PsycInfo. So it's not giving us a comprehensive list of other articles we could take a look at that may have also cited that article that I'm looking at. So for example, let's look at, oh, this one's fine, this is, this is an okay example. Um, it's been cited by three other articles. If I click that, I'm going to see those other articles, get those in my search results. Um, here's my original article. So this is great. It helps you find more stuff. Um, it is not going to give you a complete list of all the other articles that have, that have cited our original article that we found. There is a tool that we have called Web of Science that can actually help you with that. And it does, it does help you if you plug in information from your original article. You can type in your title of your article. And it's going to show you, um, for example, this article. Maybe someone in the sociology research has cited it, but we're just not getting it here. So it gives you a little bit bigger picture there. So let's, let's take a look at that while we're talking about it. I'm going to go ahead and pop into Web of Science. It literally is like a web. So it allows you to see um, if you have an article that ma that's maybe five years old, it lets you find more recent research. You can find out who's doing it. And it is interdisciplinary. So um, it, it doesn't have all journals that are published. It doesn't index all journals that are published. But it is a pretty large database. Um, the other thing that's nice about it, I don't think I talked about this, um, but just to touch on it quickly, um, it does have the Find It at UTSA button within Web of Science. So I mentioned that PsycInfo is not a full text database but you can get to the full text of those articles just by following that button a lot of times. Um, Web of Science also has that too. So it, it will link you directly to those articles if they're available through the other, li uh, other library databases. So that's really nice. Um, the other thing that's nice about Web of Science is that it does um, show you the impact 
uh, of your article. So if it's been cited 300 times, it's probably pretty important. So you might want to make sure you include that in your literature review. So pop into that database, Web of Science. So you'll notice when you first get to the search screen in Web of Science, you can search for articles on a topic. And this might be useful if you want to plug in some keywords that you used in another database. You can see other research from other disciplines. Um, what I like to do is when I find a really good article, um, get a little bit more specific so I could get more relevant results, just plug in information from that article. So I found one earlier, and I'm just going to go ahead and, and I can type in the title. And it looked like it was pretty relevant to uh, social perception, first impressions, impression formation. So I'm just going to type in social perception. If you have a longer um, title, which is common with scholarly articles, you can copy and paste it from the database you found it in. You don't have to type all of it in, but just enough um, to where you won't maybe get other articles that start with that title. Okay. So here's my, my article, the one that I found through PsycInfo. It looks great. So I can click it. And what Web of Science does is it gives me the other articles that have cited it. So I can see, now this might be a little overwhelming for me. So um, 531 other articles have cited. So I definitely don't have the problem of not having enough research. There's, there's definitely a lot out there. What you will find is some are more relevant than others as you're looking through this list of cited by articles. We can click that number. And then like I said, just to use it, the find it, use the find it at UTSA to actually find that article. Let's take a look at that right now, just kind of a quick review on finding the full text. Seems straightforward, but sometimes it can be a little tricky. Ideally, you should be able to click that find it at UTSA button and, and get your article if it's available through the UTSA libraries. And it worked great for this example, which is awesome. So there's my full article. Just with a few clicks, just by using Web of Science, I was able to find another, another article that's good for me, for my research. If that doesn't work, I always like to go over this because I think it's really important. But one thing I want you to know is if you can't figure out what, what is going on whenever you click Find It at UTSA and you get a screen like this, just ask us. It's going to save you some time. And you'll notice from this page what's happening um, sometimes. We actually have this article full text through a couple of our databases. But it's just, let's say I clicked the Find It button and it didn't link me. It took me to this page. It's just giving us our access options through the UTSA libraries. So there is online access for this particular article. We can click those links to get to the full text if that Find It button didn't work for us initially. We can also look in our catalog. So sometimes this will happen if we just have the journal in print. We don't have the most recent issues online, but we happen to have them in print in the library. We can then find out where those are located in the library. And you'll also notice on the screen, really helpful, if you're lost at this point, just ask us. Just click that button. It's going to take you to our page. And you can chat with us. Um, we do have uh, chat hours. You'll notice that those hours are posted at the bottom of the screen. You can type in your, your question and someone will answer it right away. You'll also see the other ways for getting in touch with us. So you can call us, um, give us a call, we'll help you over the phone, or you can send us an email, just wh whichever way works best for you. Always good to know about that. The other thing that is also really great <coughs> is you can request it. Request the article. So what's kind of nice about this is 
it's linked to your MyUTSA account, so you just need to use that. Same thing as your email to log in to our interlibrary loan system. And whether, if you're confused about whether we have it or not, you can just submit an online request, and it's going to go ahead and populate those fields. Within my um, interlibrary loan request, really nice, so I don't have to fill those in. Just pull the information in, and then I can just click Submit. If we have it at the library, but you just weren't able to find it because that process, it can be really confusing, we're going to find it for you. We're going to scan it in. If it's not available online, we're going to email it to you. If it is available online, we'll pull it out of the database that it's in. We'll also email it to you. So if you ever get stuck at that point, just know that we can definitely help you out and save you a lot of time. So um, Web of Science is really useful because it also gives you the original bibliography for your article. That's also a gold mine for you. Again, some of those articles may be more relevant than others. Um, perhaps some of them are books. Some of them may be relevant than others to your area of research. But a lot of times they are relevant. And within Web of Science, um, let's go back to our record here. We can see the original references for the article. So, um, whoops, it looks like it's not working for this one. A lot of times what you will see is you'll see a list of the original references and then you should see full text linking to those as well. Actually, maybe what, what happens if, if we click find related records and may actually pull those up where we can link to them. Let's try it. Yeah, so that works. Whoops. No. Hmm. It looks like it's not working quite the way I thought it did. But the good thing about that, even if that linking doesn't work, you can look at your original bibliography for your article, plug in the journal name, and then you can find that actual article that you need. And if you do need help with that, we can also guide you through that, that process. One other thing um, that I also think is really helpful, so we've taken a look at a database searching using the thesaurus, um, looking at web of science, finding other research, linking to those articles, really useful tools. One thing that's also really great is if you find a journal that keeps popping up in your research, um, that's probably one you want to take a look at. And what's nice about a lot of our journals is you can search just within that journal. So um, one of my searches, I got a lot of hits. Searching within a journal gives you more relevant stuff. Um, and depending on how often the journal is published, um, just you may get definitely fewer results, a little more focused for you. So an example um, that kept popping up a lot in my search results is the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. So that's probably one I want to take a look at. It sounds like it would be relevant to attribution theory. So I can just um, go to our website. What we can do, um, what I like to do, what I recommend is uh, UCAT, going into UCAT. You want to see if we have that journal online or if we have it in print, but hopefully we have it online. Have my fingers crossed. And then UCAT's going to tell us, if we do have it, what databases it's available through. And then we can search it directly. So Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. We'll do a journal title search. Just make sure you change your search just to get journals. And oftentimes what happens whenever you pull up journals in the catalog, it'll give you multiple results. And that's because uh, journals often change, na change names. Um, so you'll see uh, the record for a previous name, which is what's happening in this example. It used to be called the Journal of Abnormal and Social Psychology. But we wanted to see if it's online. We have it online. We have it in print. Um, we have the most recent stuff. It looks like this is the record we want to look at. Uh, from 1965. Let's pull that up. 
When you're in the record, you're going to see your options for accessing the journal. And you're going to see what database it's available through. And this one's available through Psych Articles. So, 1965 to present. Looks good. So just click that link. Just like our databases, whenever you click a link that, like that within the catalog, it's going to ask you if you're off campus, last name, banner ID. You just put that information in. What it did is it took us into Psych Articles. We're just looking right now at the issues that are available in here, available online, Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. What I like to do is to scroll down to the bottom. And some databases make this a little bit easier than others, but you can just search within the journal. So we're looking at attribution theory or first impressions, impression formation. Any of those keywords would be fine. Let's just do um, first impressions. So within Psych Articles, um, just searching within that journal, there are 180 articles there. And I could get a little bit more specific. So this is really helpful for my topic because I'm getting so many hits. I can maybe throw in some other keywords, um, get a little bit more specific with my search, and really focus and hopefully get some really good articles that are relevant to what, what I'm looking at. The other thing um, that's really helpful to whenever you're writing a literature review, usually you have a good amount of time to do that, or at least a semester. Um, you can create alerts within databases. So I'm just gonna kind of log in. I already have my account. If you don't have one, you can you can create one. Just click new new users, users register here. So you can save your searches here. The other thing you can do is um, tell this database that you want it to email you an alert when a new article is available on your area. So you can type in your keywords and you can set up how, how you'd like to be notified by email. If you prefer not to be notified at all, you can also um, select that. I'm going to go to manage uh, searches and alerts. I think I set one up already. So here it is. I set one up on impression formation. So if I click edit, this is where I can uh, change how I want that alert to work for me. So this is nice if you set it up at the beginning of a semester um, or if you're writing a dissertation, you have a little bit longer. These are really great. And you don't have to actually actively go out and find those articles, set up your alert, especially if it's in a database that's in your area of research. It's going to work really well for you, I think. So you can set it up to receive those emails, or you can just choose to log into the database and, and retrieve your alerts that way if you prefer. So just a couple more things I want to cover, and then I think I'll be done. Um, so actually finding literature reviews in the library. So I talked a little bit about finding resources for your literature review, but what if we want to maybe um, take advantage of other literature reviews that might be out there on similar topics related to mine. So one thing you can do um, is take a look at a database that we have called Annual Reviews Online. I'm going to go back to our homepage, find databases and articles. And this database um, is not comprehensive, so it's not going to include every subject under the sun, but depending on where area you're researching, it is really good for finding the primary research. Uh, in that area, and you can find literature reviews in here. They're pretty, um, they're pretty comprehensive once you get to those literature reviews. So click the link to go in. So I can go ahead and type in some keywords. I'm going to change my topic up a bit, interpersonal communication. One thing that's nice about this database is, let's say you found, and you likely will, you find some authors, the scholars that are well known within your area of research. Um, you can also plug that information in and um, find links to their, their other resources in here. I'm just going to actually start with just some search terms, interpersonal communication. So 
So it is um, giving us full text of those literature reviews. What I really like about this database, and again, depending on your discipline, it may or may not be as helpful. Um, you can see the most frequent author names that are associated or tied to interpersonal communication. And then um, you can search those author names in communication abstracts um, for this uh, particular topic and find other articles that they've written. And a lot of times authors do focus their research in certain areas, so that's another way to find more stuff. <clears throat> the other thing that's also helpful, it does give you some <clears throat> most frequently used keywords. And then we talked a little bit about searching within journals, um, but it also gives you the most frequent journals to find um, articles on, uh, on the topic of interpersonal communication. A um, couple other things I think I want to show you. Uh, dissertations and theses full text. Just want to show you quickly how to get into that. That can also be a good, re a good resource for you. It does contain the full text of dissertations and theses. And yes, they're like 200 pages, 300 pages, some of them, but the entire PDF is there many, many times. So we'll just use my topic of interpersonal communication. I am going to get those full text of the dissertations. And then what I can do is, you know, I'll probably want to take a look at the abstracts for some of these because they are longer. They are dissertations and theses. But I can take a look at the literature review within that dissertation and also maybe get some other ideas of the directions I can go with my research. So that's just a kind of a little, um, a good little tip. And these are really nice and convenient to search because they are full text online. And I can just go to that literature review section, kind of see um, what's been done in that area. It's a good tip. If we want to just search for literature reviews within databases, within PsycInfo, within PsycInfo, and I think I think um, Eric is another database that does this as well, but it gives you the option to limit to literature reviews only. If you don't have that option, another thing you can try is just using as a keyword um, literature review or review of the literature because oftentimes um, authors will have that or th that will be included, those phrases will be included in the abstract. I'm just going to show you in Psych Info an example of where, where you can find that limit. Again, it's not available, the limit's not available through most databases, um, but just using those keywords should help you pull out those lit reviews in that database. Um, within this database, it's under methodology. We can click and, and we'll find our literature review. Just add that to our search. So just to sum up what we covered this morning, um, we took a look at Gale virtual reference, reference to kind of help us get an idea of the bigger picture of our area of research. Taking a look at subject-specific databases is also great. If you identify more than one, and you likely will, um, use as many as you can. Try not to focus on just one database. If you're not getting a lot of stuff, try another one, because oftentimes you can find more stuff. Um, we also took a look at Web of Science to kind of help you see the web of research. So going forward and backward with your research. And um, it also helps you identify whether that was a seminal um, work within that area of research, too. And we had talked a little bit about searching within journals, creating alerts, and, and then also just finding lit reviews in the library, like using annual reviews online, um, and how to search for those in the databases using those keywords. So I hope this was helpful for you. Um, thank you, and good luck with your lit review.